Hello everyone, welcome back to Algorithms Simplified. Today we are going over leak code number 42, Trapping Rainwater. First, let's go over the question itself. So in the description of leak code, this is what it says. It says, given n non-negative integers representing an elevation map where the width of each bar is one, compute how much water it can trap after raining. I find that this is a little ambiguous and it's a little hard to interpret. So I put it in my own words for your convenience. Essentially what they're asking is that you're given some sort of input and it's an integer array. Let's call it H for now. And for every single index value pair in H, the index plus oneth column, so because we start at index zero, so the first, the second, and the third column is value units tall by one unit wide. So if we have one, if we have some sort of like one, two, three as H, then that means the first column is one unit tall, second column is two units tall, and the third column is three units tall. That's basically what it means. And because we are working with units here, um, obviously the value has to be non negative because we're not working in some other sort of dimension here. We're working with the real numbers and real dimensions right here. Uh, the output is an integer. So the question asks for the total unit squared of rainwater that the columns H can hold. So let's go over an example to see exactly how this works. Here I've just drawn up a graph according to the example given in lead code. Uh, example number one, you can go on and look at it yourself. So these are the numbers given in the array and these represents the heights and underneath I've written the indices. And here I've just drawn up a little graph to represent what this means. So the bar number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 represents the index plus oneth position. For example, at the first bar, there is, is zero units tall. At the second bar, it is one unit tall. For the third bar, it is zero units tall, so on and so forth. And this right here is our graph or our map. And now the question is saying that there is rainwater, so some sort of rain is coming down. And there's a very heavy rain, so it pretty much covered everything. And it's asking between the boundaries of these columns right here, how many units of water can it hold? So should water come down, it would come here because there is a gap between the second and fourth column that allows water to be trapped. Here, there is none because there's nothing left of column one to support the water. For here, we have all this area right here covered with rainwater. And here we have this covered with rainwater. And however, this cannot be covered with rainwater because there is no wall here to hold up any water. So in total, if we were given this H right here, our number that we should return should be one, two, three, four, five, six. So we should return six. So now that we understand what the problem is asking, let's go over what the brute force solution might look like, look at its limitations, and see if we can make any observations to make it more efficient to reach our final solution. So a brute force solution would be something as follows. So at every single column, we're going to keep going forward, adding up every single unit, so every single difference between its current height and the next unit over or next column over until we hit another column that is equal to or greater than the current column's height or we reach the end. So let me illustrate what this kind of brute force would look like. So we start at uh, the first column 
and we keep going forward until we reach column two. But because column two is larger than or equal to the height at column one, we stop. And in total, uh, we have zero units because that is the dimension of the height at column one. Okay, now that we have reached column two, we're going to keep going forward. Well, column three is shorter than column two, so we keep going forward. We hit column four, we see that there is exactly one unit at column three that can hold the water, so we add one. At column four, we do the same thing. Well, here at column five, there, it, there is a column, but it is shorter than column four, so it can't catch any of the water. So we add one unit, so the difference between the column four's height and column five's height. And then for column six, the difference between the two heights is two units. And for column seven, we keep going because it's indeed still shorter than column four. So that's one more unit until we reach column eight. And now you might be thinking, wait a minute, that's really efficient. You're not wasting any of your time going forward. However, that just happened to be the case for the first two columns. Here, when we reach column eight, our highest or tallest column, if we do the same maneuvers, say, I'm gonna use a different color now, let's use pink. So here, I would, you know, color here, I would count this in, I would count this in, I would count this in until I reach the end and realize, hey, there's nothing that's gonna be able to hold all this rainwater up. So everything I did starting from column eight is completely useless. I just wasted all my time doing these calculations. So I need to go all the way back and then start at column nine and keep going forward and then so on and so forth. Well, in this case, this sort of brute force algorithm for this example might not be too bad because there are such a limited number of columns that we can traverse and there's, I guess, only a few calculations that we make that are extra. But since we're talking about, if we're talking about worst case analysis, what if the kind of the bar looked like this, you know, like so? Then in that case, using that same algorithm, I, starting at this column, I would keep adding, keep adding everything until the end. Oh no, there's nothing there, it's zero. Let's go back to the next column, do the same thing, it's zero. Go back to the next column, next column, next column, so on and so forth. In that case, we would have a O of N for every single calculation after a certain column, and we need to repeat this N times so our brute force is O of N squared. So let's write this right here. Oh, o of N squared. This is very slow. Hmm. Well, the main issue with, you see, the brute force method is not necessarily the calculation in the difference between the heights. It's the fact that we don't know if there necessarily is a column after the column we're currently at that can indeed hold the water. Now, if we are sure that for some column we are at, there is indeed something taller than it, then we don't need to worry and we can keep moving forward and we can make sure that we won't reach the end and do all these extra calculations for nothing. One very interesting thing that can help us with the solution is realizing that no matter if we go left to right, so in increasing index order or decreasing index order, the calculation for the rainwater should be the same. Because these are column structures, uh, whether we count this way or that way shouldn't affect the total area of water that can be held. How can this help us? Well, say we are at some column, let's say we are, um, say, traversing this way, left to right, and we are at some column here. On the other hand, I'm at another column, some other column in the graph, and I'm traveling this way. 
Well, it has to be that one bar between the two of these has to be the taller one or the equal one, right? So let's say for argument's sake that this is indeed the taller one and this is the shorter one. In that case, I do not need to worry. And from this column right here, I can keep traveling, doing the same thing we did in brute force, knowing full well that I am able to hit at least one column that can hold the water that I'm calculating because either there's going to exist some other column here that we're going to hit first that's taller than or equal to the column orange, or we're going to be able to hit T or the purple pink column as a guarantee. And this is true conversely because if, say, it was the other way around, orange being the taller one and uh, pink being the shorter one, then we can travel instead left to right, doing the same calculations, knowing for sure that there is indeed a wall, at least one wall afterwards to quote unquote catch all the rainwater that we've been accumulating up until then. Well, what does this mean? This means that because we have guaranteed a way to not need to come back to the next column over, redo calculations, come back, redo calculations, come back, we can guarantee that we only need to go to each column once in order to calculate the total amount of rainwater accumulated. Great, so let's put this more efficient algorithm and visualize it on our same example. So here, as before, let's have two pointers, one starting at each end and traversing towards the other end. So as before, I'm gonna have a pointer here starting at the first column and then another column or another pointer for a column at the other side, the end, which is going to travel this way and the orange one is going to travel this way. Let's see if indeed we only need to travel to each column once. So now we compare first we compare the values between the first column and the twelfth column because that's where our pointers are. Well, we see that the first column is shorter than the last column, so we know that if we travel forward from the first column, we are not scared of needing to undo our calculations because there is at least one wall afterwards that can catch the rainwater at column one. Well, we keep going from column one, and since we get to column two, and there is a wall or a column that is taller than the height at column one, we stop. And we see that since there were zero units between them, we don't add anything to the total. So let's keep a count of a total right here. Now, let's compare again. Well, again, you know, orange, if it travels forward, since it's the exact same height as the column at the pink pointer, we know for sure that there is something there to catch the rainwater, should uh, at least one column. So we don't need to undo any calculations. Again, we keep moving forward, we move to column three, we see that column three, uh, between it and column two, there is a one unit gap. So we add that to our total, and then we move forward from column three to column four, and we stop because column four is taller than column two. And we hit something that's a retaining wall. Now, when we compare between the two pointers again, we see that the pink pointer or the, or the column right here is shorter than the column at the orange pointer. So we know that there exists at least a wall, 
specifically at the orange pointer, that is going to be able to catch all the calculations leftward of the pink pointer wall. So we have no fear of going leftward with the orange pointer. So we go leftward and we meet 11 and since it's taller and there's zero units between those two, we don't add anything to the total. Now comparing the two again, we see that you know, we can go either way, but for the sake of, uh, you know, consistency for between column four and column 11, since they're equal, we know that column four at least has column 11 to catch it. So we're not scared of needing to redo calculations. We keep going forward. We reach, col we reach column five. We see that there is a one unit difference. We add that to the total and then we keep going forward. Column six. We add that to the total, that's two more, one, two. And then here we go to column seven, we add one more, that's five. And then we reach column eight. Between column eight and column 11, so where our pointer's at, we see that 11 is shorter than column eight. So we travel leftward from the pink pointer, knowing full well that there is at least one wall to catch it. So we move leftward from pink to column 10. We see that there is indeed one unit of water that we can catch, so we add one more. So total is now six. You move forward to column nine. From column nine, uh, from column 9 and column 8, we compare the two. We see that column 9 is shorter than column 8, so we move forward knowing full well we can reach something. So now that we've reached column 8 and we have nothing to add, we see that the two pointers are overlapping, so they're on the same column now. So do we have to keep moving forward? No, we don't, because no matter where these two meet either somewhere in the middle like this or it could be that you know say the first column was the tallest and they end up meeting at the end or the last was the tallest and they ended up meeting at this end we know that we have traversed the entire graph of columns with each column being calculated for the rainwater so since we traversed each column once and each ad addition, so each adding and subtracting is O of one, we know that this algorithm is only O of n. So that's our solution. So right before I head into the coding part of the solution, if you've made it to this far in the video and you like the content you see, please do consider subscribing and liking the video so that I can make better content for you. Now, without further ado, the coding solution. So as we described before, let's first initiate or initialize some variables. Let's have left index and right index as the pointers to the front and the end of the list, respectively. Next, let's have a pointer column height. This variable is going to refer to the column that we are counting the rainwater from. So we initialize that to zero, but let me comment. So the height of the shorter column we are moving from. Great. And total rainwater, we will initialize that to zero. Great. So while left index and the right index have not met yet, now there are two possibilities. If the left index's value is less than or equal to right index's value, so height of the right index, we know that, so we know that there exists at least one column right of left index that can catch 
our rainwater. You know, there, there's two possibilities here. Either we have reached a column that catches water, or we have reached a starting column that is about to catch the water. So if the pointer column height, so that refers to the height from which we're counting from, is greater than or equal to the height at the left index, we know that we're actually counting the water difference between the two. So total water, we're going to add the value of the column we are counting from minus the height of the uh, bar or the column that we're currently over. So let's comment that. So this is when we have yet to reach a column to catch water. And the next possibility is that we have reached a starting column. And what, what I mean by that is this is a column in which we start counting from, because if, you know, say over here, we have, uh, we were, you know, here at the left pointer, and now all of a sudden we reach this column right here, that's a starting column, column that is larger, then we know that we actually have to reset the pointer column height to the value that we're currently at. So the height of left index. Great. And no matter what happens, we have to advance the pointer in order to not get stuck in the while loop. So left index, we move rightward. So increasing index, there we go. And for the sake of simplicity, I am going to, you know, it, it's mirrored on the other side. So I'm going to copy this here. And I'll change this. We know that, so in this case, if the height on the right side is less than the height on the left side for, for the pointers, then we know that there exists at least one column left of the right index that can catch our rainwater. So if the pointer column height, so the height we're counting from, is greater than or equal to the right index, we have yet to ha reach a water, uh, reach a column to catch the water, so we add the difference between the two. And here we're going to use this instead of left index. Great. And otherwise, we have reached a starting column. Let's let's, let's add the word column because starting is a little difficult to understand. There we go. A starting column. So what that means is we need to update the pointer column height to the current height, and then we advance the right index forward. Now, some of you might be thinking, wait a minute, why do we have the same variable to represent the heights we are counting from for both the left side and the right side pointers moving different directions? Well, if you think about it, we're only advancing from the shorter or equal between the two of the pointers. Therefore, the pointer column height, which refers to the column we are moving from, has to be the short height of the shorter column we are moving from. So it doesn't matter if even if we had two variables, uh, one referring to the left column pointers height and right column pointers height, it wouldn't really make a difference. We actually end up wasting a little more space. Okay, great. So now that we have done that, remember to return the total rain water at the end. Now let's submit and see if that works. Oh, total water. Oh, I guess I named it total water instead of total rainwater. So let's do total rainwater, total rainwater. Submit. Great. 